Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to the first design recharge of 2018. I came in, it's super quiet here. The lights are off out there. They're always off in my office. I just use natural light. So I'm super excited to have my old student, Nick Brito, who I had a hard time saying his name for many, many years, but it's kind of like burrito, but it's not spelled like that. B-R-I-T-O, but it does sound like that. Anyway, I'm excited. Happy New Year to everybody, and I'm really excited to have Nick here today. And he has done something that I think we all, um, especially at the new year, you like make a new set of goals and you just want to go for it. Well, Nick really did that after he graduated, and it really had um, a big impact on his career and what he's been able to do. And so we're going to talk about that. So this one was like working through goals or setting goals. I can't even remember what I called this episode. Do you remember? Working oh, through, towards a goal. Towards working a goal. towards a goal. I have it right in front of me. <laughs> Maybe I should look. Um, but anyway, um, so Nick um, is an illustrator. He's a designer. I would not have necessarily, I don't think you would have necessarily said you were an illustrator when you were in school. Right? Definitely not. No, no. Okay. So tell us um, a little bit about, because I always ask people to do a little bit of a background. So mm -hmm. you went to design school, clearly. Yes. And then so, what, so kind of give them the background of what maybe school was like, and then where, what made you get the fire? Because okay. you got a fire after you graduated. Okay, I'll try and sum this up. So uh, I was a student at South Alabama, and as a student, I... I never really stood out. Like I didn't have any specialty or anything that like people could see that and be like, Nick made it. So I wasn't bad at design. I just never really had my thing. But then um, after I graduated, like after senior thesis, it went kind of poorly. I, you know, our class had a really strong thesis, like undoubtedly one of the best I've seen. And I'm not trying, I might be a little biased, but it was really good. And mine just didn't really stack up. So that kind of gave me the kick in the butt I needed. So after senior thesis was over and, you know, everyone graduated, I started this illustration project shortly after it where I was in a part-time job. So I had free time to do this and really explore. So after work every day, what I would do is I started on July 8th. And what I would do after work every day is just make an illustration a day. And I committed to do it from July 8th till the end of the year. And I stuck with it. And it's like, all I did was focus on the positive aspect of my day for the theme. Because like, whenever I came up with the idea, there was a lot of negativity going around on social media. And I just kind of wanted to break out of that bubble. So instead, I decided to try and do something positive And that kind of tailspinned everything with my career, design, illustration. It's really what got all of the you know, gears grinding. So with the illustration, because I think for me, as I start the sabbatical, I'm inspired by your work. You've gotten so much better in the, a year and a half, maybe year and a half. Yeah. yeah. And Only that's July, it. July 8th. But I mean, you could see from July to December, you mm -hmm. had really, I mean, it was just exploded, but I didn't, I mean, you weren't taking any classes. Right. You were done. You had taken one illustration class when you were mm -hmm. in school. So what were you doing to really spark the learning and how would you kind of deconstruct some of your heroes um, illustrations? Mm -hmm. So starting off, I, um, I read Be Vector Basic Training by Von Glischka, which mm -hmm. was a super, super helpful book for just like kind of finding out some of the ins and outs of the illustrator. And it's, it's these small things that make a big difference. So I read that to kind of first get my feet wet in it. And then after that, uh, watch some Skillshare videos, but then just getting inside of Illustrator every day. That, I mean, that's first of all, the most important thing. But another way that really helps is like, I would sketch out my idea and begin it in Illustrator. And then once I reached the point that I was comfortable with, I would pull like illustrators that have done something similar. So it's like something that Nick Slater did. Adam Grayson, Raji, and just kind of see where like little details they did in theirs, how I can add that into mine. And that really helped me learn like different illustration tricks and tips and how like compositions work is just by observing people that are way more prolific than I am. So that's, that's probably the biggest thing. 
So then, so you, did you read the book like from start to finish? Are you a fast um, reader? I don't know if I read the whole book more so. But you looked at the pictures? Yeah. I mean, they helped a lot. <laughs> they <laughs> helped illustrating you to see what you're doing. But I, I read most of it, I think. I read most of it. I'm but a really big... on Skillshare, like DKNG has some of the most helpful, like simple tricks for their Skillshare videos that can be applied to so many things in Illustrator. And, and I'll, put, well, I'll um, put links to these in the show notes just so everybody knows. Go ahead. Um, Hayden Obey also has some really good, like, basic illustration, like, tips and tricks for starters. How do you spell her, that last name? A-U-B-E. I think A- it's from Canada. A-U-B-E. Mm-hmm. Hayden, H-A-Y-D-E-N? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So both of those on Skillshare. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then Von Glitschka's um, uh, Vector Basic Training, which I put a link over in the... Um, side thing I can't type and talk so this is why I shouldn't do this um okay so you how how many hours a day because like I'm wondering what kind of goal or commitment I would need or somebody else would need because I also think you know a lot of times especially at this time of year we're thinking about doing something new or changing Mm -hmm. or revving up our new kind of if this is something you've always been a designer but not really an illustrator much like me um um, oh, and David says DKNG has links or a discount code to cheap classes on Skillshare right now. So we'll check that out. I think it, they're probably DKNG.com or D- design or something, yeah. but they're really good. Um, thank you, David, for sharing that. Um, so what kind of goal or commitment did you make for your um, first drawing or illustration challenge? Because I knew that there was, it wasn't a hundred days. It was a little bit more than that, right? hmm it was 178 or 177 total. But whenever I was first starting it, like I'm someone where I'll have an idea in my head and then one day I just decide like, okay, I'm going to do it and really commit. So once I started that, what I would do is just spend a minimum of two hours, a maximum of five on each illustration. And I think like just spending an hour, I mean, just spending any time every day is going to really improve your skills but it would be like probably an hour or so of sketching and then like an hour to four hours in like in the computer. Cause a lot of times like what you'll start when you're learning is you'll have your idea and then you execute and illustrate it, but then you're like, all right, let's try, let's try different things. And that's when you really will start to have that growth is whenever you just take your idea and then just run with it, just experiment every way you can, like look at other illustrators and how they did it and just kind of not steal their style, but use, the elements they did in theirs and apply it to yours. So another thing um, you did was uh, it you came up with different styles. So in the beginning, you were kind of just trying different things out. You didn't really get, you were, weren't really settled in one style, which probably helped, I think. It did. It did. Um, Cause then you weren't committing to something that you didn't know if you really liked doing or if you were really good at. So you do a lot of shape based illustrations, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But you've done things with lines. You've done things that weren't shape based, but you always, and we're going to get into your process in a little bit. Um, so what do you, so you would spend an hour or two learning and then you would spend four to five hours in the beginning actually executing, right? I'll spend the whole time learning. Like really. Okay. I, I started it like, step zero. I had no illustration skills. Like I, I never was good at sketching. So like any, any time I put into it, I was learning because I mean, as you'll see, like whenever I pull up my first illustration that I ever did in a class ever, like you can tell that I started at a very low level, (laughs) but I mean, just like getting that practice in it, it really helped a lot. Um, so So talk a little bit, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. So talk okay. about your process because the, your process is not just jumping straight on the computer, correct? Mm, you no, do no. sketches. Yes. Always start with sketches. Like generally there's around three thumbnails I'll do. Like I have a little Rodia dot pad and I'll always just make off like three little squares and just do little thumbnails. Mm-hmm. And I got that idea from Nick Slater. I remember seeing one of his... I think it was 
his Lord of the Rings illustration he did, but he just showed off like these three little thumbnails he did. And that kind of got me the idea, like I don't need to be doing these grand scale illustrations. I just want to do something small and then get the idea out there. And then if I really like an idea, then I can make it larger, really fine tune that sketch and then bring it in. Um, but I, yeah, I always start with the sketchbook. So why is the rodeo, why is the dot thing helpful? Me and you talked about this at lunch. We went to lunch mm -hmm. on Sunday. That's what the benefit of having somebody so close. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, um, so, so why? Me, yeah. Illustrator, the way I use it, it's such a geometric program. So with the, the dot pad, you can already be thinking in geometrics. So like 45 degree angles, 30 degree angles, half circles. And like, it, it just helps think about, like get you think about how, how to apply it in Illustrator before you even put it into Illustrator. Because the more you can finesse your sketch, the easier it'll be like once you're in the program. And that's, that's something I learned from Von Glitschka was, you know, the more you can refine something, the, the less daunting Illustrator will be because you know exactly what you need to do. When you're using the Pathfinder tool, you're, you're using the ex, ex, um, expanding shapes together, you're doing minusing front a lot, right? Things like mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Pathfinder tool is my best friend. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not Megan? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, just, I'm just playing. <laughs> All right, so... When you're talking about certain styles, so there are lots of people who have lots of different styles and you actually have lots of different styles as well. Was there anybody that really helped you? I know DK and G and Von Glitschka. Was there anybody else that helped you on different styles, kind of um, expand your knowledge in that particular thing? So that as me, if, I, if, I, if you're telling me, Diane, if this is really, because one of my parts of my sabbatical is I'm doing four different types of illustrations. One is the shape based and it's because of you, um, because you've inspired me to do that. And he's come in and shown my class how to do things. And I'm like, man, it makes it not look so scary. Um, but it really is thinking a different way. So what about for different styles? When you're starting, so say you're going to start a new project, which we're going to get to in a minute, what would you do to kind of look out for a, in a new style when you're creating something? Do you? So the way that I got exposed to a lot of styles was I would find people that were on Instagram that have like a large following. So people like Scotty Russell, Nick Slater, um, Scott Fuller. And then I would see who they were following. And it's mm -hmm. like, they generally have a short list of people they're following and almost all of them are ridiculously talented. So I got exposed to like people who could do stylistic, like shape building, thick lines, texturing and all that kind of thing. So finding who the people that already inspire you, who they are inspired by, that's, that's a great way to get exposed to a bunch of really talented um, people that work in a variety of styles. So okay. like Adam Grayson, he was one that I went to when I initially started working with texturing because I've always loved how he does like that grainy, grainy textures on all of them. Not all of them, but a lot of the illustrations. It's just a really nice style that I wanted to try. So the biggest thing is just like finding one person is all it takes sometimes and just being like, all right, I want to try that. Or you'll find a bunch of people that have it and just whoever you're really like relating to just try theirs. And something in the beginning, it was just confidence. Really, you got confidence by doing some simple things, and then you started trying new things. At you didn't just try to create this scene with all this texture and all these no. buildings and everything no. right in the beginning, right? You yeah. you you started with realistic goals, and as yes. you your confidence grew and your speed, then mm -hmm. you were able to, you know, yeah. hey, my yeah. mom's here. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. So, um, all right, so how much time do you spend like per week now or may during when you're doing one of these sprints? Um, mm -hmm. How much time per week do you think like during the week, not maybe on the weekends, but during the week, how much time do you spend working on this project? I'd say two to four hours, two to four That's hours a week. No, two to four hours a day, a week. Okay. That's okay. We can do the math yes. two to four Sorry. times five. Sorry. We got it. So yeah. then, so then on the weekend, <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, you're spending some time. Doing, yeah, that's are, when I want to spend more. Like, okay. That one I'll spend probably like three to five hours. Both Saturday and Sunday or just one of those days? Generally Sunday. 
Saturday, okay. I'm generally a little more lazy. It's like my off day. Oh, that's good. Get back to it. <laughs> you so, gotta have those, those down times. So what time are you getting up? Because that seems like somebody's giving two to four hours. I don't well, know. I do everything after work. Like I wake up at six to get in the gym and that's, that's been a huge help period. It just gets my mind right. It feels good to do physical activity. And that's, I mean, it's really been a huge thing for, for getting myself feeling like physically well and mentally well. Um, so I wake up at six in the morning and go to the gym, but then after work is over at like five, I just go home, make my sketch and then go into the computer. So it's like from five to like eight o'clock, generally five, five to eight, five to seven is when I'll go ahead and make that illustration. When do you eat? <laughs> uh, <laughs> never. No. So probably like seven or eight. It just depends on like. If it's in a the middle of this? Yeah. So it's like if it's a longer illustration, I'll do it in between. But okay. if like I know that I'm, I'm close to the end, then I'll just do everything first and then eat after if it's like done by seven. I gotcha. So you're still, you're not. That'd be nice. Because one time I, I would think if I was doing this after dinner, sometimes if I work too late, it gets it's hard to go to bed because my head's still mm -hmm. going. Yeah. So I think maybe that's a good tip to do it right after work. Mm -hmm. And then also it's like, as far as the whole getting to bed, like that's another huge pro going to the gym early in the morning. It's like by the time everything in my day is done, like I'm, I'm tired out. Like I'm ready to go to bed. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> what time do you go to bed? Like 10 or 11. Oh, that's still pretty sure late for me. <laughs> like, I always make sure to get seven hours since I'm up at six. Okay, that's, yeah. That's the minimum. Got to get that beauty sleep. Yes. It helps you live longer. Yeah, All I right. learned that for my senior year. There was, like, no sleep that year. So that's <laughs> Did when you I go to the gym then? Important. Nope. <laughs> no gym. Just a relentless 24-hour day. But it's, it's, it's just like doing this illustration because Emily's like, I can never turn my brain off. So I think – it's about getting in the habit of doing mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. Routines help. They, they help so much. So can you walk us through, do you, and Carrie asked earlier if you have your sketchbook with you. Uh, I don't, but I can grab. Do you want to grab one real quick? I, like, I have a whole stack of papers. Yeah, I'll grab them. Okay. Quick. Okay. I'll just say stuff to y'all for a little bit. Anyway, so I'm going to do four different types of illustrations. One is collage because I love collage and I think it's super hard and fun and look nick made me this isn't that cool he can blow glass too anyway um and then shape because of nick and then didn't do dustin's brushes and a limited color palette i have no idea what i'm drawing and then watercolor those are the four things hey amy hey and i showed him your oh he can't hear me yet hey glass i showed him your vase that you I'm blew glass blowing was, Isn't that cool? Okay, so here is is some of the sketch sketchbook stack. So you're just using oh no, but you're using the rodeo. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. You just rip I'm them out. Using, yeah. So whenever I can scan them in, I'm using this dot pad right here. Okay. This is the best. Eight and a half by eleven. We'll get you covered. And Laura says awesome glass work. Well, thank you, Laura. Okay, so you have, show, just pull up a sketch. Like, can you just show? I will do the one I did for ours. Okay, so, uh, cool. For the little graphic I made for Design Recharge, like, first I thought about doing a robot, because I know you like robots. <laughs> I do. But then I want to do something more like recharge theme. So, and with sketches, it's like, I just need to get the idea out there. So it's like, I saw this and I was like, okay, I can run with that. And that's all I needed to take into the computer. Like, I wish that I was better at sketching so I could just execute an idea perfectly on paper and bring it mm -hmm. into Illustrator and get it done. But it's like, being realistic, I'm, I'm not. So it's just about getting that base idea out there. And then it's like, once you get more and more proficient in Illustrator, you'll, you'll know exactly how to execute the idea you have. All right, so you make the sketch and sometimes it might take a little bit longer in the sketch process. Did it Definitely. take longer in the beginning of this project? It just depended on the day. Like someday okay. I would be struck by inspiration. It's like, 
I would, in an ideal pop in my head and I'm like, all right, I know exactly what I want to do when I get home. Like, and that's another thing with having it at the end of my work day. It's like, I have time to think about stuff sometimes and then like an idea will just strike me. Like a lot of times it'll happen whenever I'm driving home. Cause I, that's just like my tune out time. Like I don't, a lot of times I don't play music. Like I just get in my head space and just kind of think about ideas. So on a good day, it'll just pop into me in my head whenever I'm driving home. So I don't have to spend as much time sketching out ideas. But whenever that doesn't happen, there's, yeah, the sketching phase definitely takes a lot longer. So when you started, because that's the one thing I was telling them about my four different types of illustrations that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't really, uh, my friend Ann today, and she's here, uh, we were talking on the phone before the show. And I said, I have no idea what I'm going to draw, but this is the medium, you know, or this is the tool I'm going to use to do this. So that's kind of a, a, I don't know, a barrier to execution for me is knowing. So you started with things that were positive. Mm -hmm. What kind of things did you draw? Uh, So for the first one, it was any positive thing for my day. And so that could have been, I mean, it's, it's the small things. Sometimes if I had like no red lights driving home, that would be all it takes. That's a good day. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Or if, if there's something really, pretty that I saw or if me and Meg got a meal together and had dinner like I think it's it's a lot easier to think of stuff to create when it's stuff that's personal to yourself like that that made it a lot easier for me because ultimately no one else you know has the same story as you so to be able to share something that's personal to you it it, it'll make the ideas come a lot easier because I mean we all have something positive from our day like Mm -hmm. None of us are have that bad of lives. I'd like to think if you do, please reach out. We can talk. <laughs> um, but like, it's just a small thing like that. You can, you can make an idea from and create. That's for sure. Okay. So then um, you, you take your sketch. Did you scan it? Shoot a photo with your phone? What was the next step? Straight to the scanner. I scanned it with this old HP desk that I have. Okay. It still scans well. So I'll just scan that into the laptop and then I would bring that into Illustrator and start from there. And then you just start making shapes. Oh, is that God. the cat? You bet it is. <laughs> She's scanning for you. <laughs> She's trying to get in the cabinet over there. Oh man. <laughs> she busted though. She fell. So she's gone for me now. We anyway. heard her. <laughs> oh. um, so when you are I guess when I'm getting started as I'm thinking about this project for me, so I'm being Mm -hmm. selfish, but it helps maybe everybody. Um, You would start, you knew you were starting with shapes. So if you were going to draw that microphone, Mm -hmm. you would start with an oval. Yeah. I mean, this was literally made just with shapes. So it's just like, you can view it as a square connected by two half circles and then just like two rectangles cutting into it. This is just like, a half circle that you can condense down or a circle that you can cut. That's all I did for it. So it's just, that's the way that I've started thinking about a lot of my illustrations because it's, when it comes to illustrator, like it's different in Photoshop. I'm not nearly as well versed in there, but when it comes to illustrator, a lot of it is so geometric. Like it just, it's a program that's catered to that. So it it helps to think in that mindset for me personally. And you were also saying like with the rodeo, having the dot grid, you can already think about 45 degree angles, um, things like that. So it just already helps because it is kind of set apart already in a grid, right? Yeah. And and the the less I can freehand sketch, because once again, I'm not good at sketching, the better. So just already having like all of these dots to kind of think about my line work and stuff helps like that little barrier in my mind when it comes to sketching. So I'm just going to real quick share some work of yours on Instagram because Instagram is one of the main places that, oops, boogers, boogers. That's not what I wanted to do. I just, seeing all the tabs. there it is. I know I was trying to move it over. So it was not getting covered over. So this is basically a line one. This is the one you did mm-hmm. in its line plus shape, I guess. Then mm-hmm. this one has a lot more depth. You're really, you know, you're working with gradients and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, which is definitely something you've been doing. That was a great movie, by the way. Um, yeah, I thought it was. That but ending. Pardon? That ending. Yeah. Well, you'll have to see it. What was the name of that movie again? Arrival. 
Arrival. But that I totally knew what you had watched when I saw that um, you did a so you the first theme you did was just the positives and then you did mm -hmm. a theme that was what fitness so see if for I can, me oh, like starting these side projects it it really helped to make it once again make it personal like I'm not just gonna go online and find a list of ten best side projects to do on your free time because it's mm -hmm. I can't connect to that. You know, it's, it's gonna, I'm going to burn out quick. So for my first two, I wanted to make it, I knew that I wanted to get better at illustration, but then I wanted to make the, the other primary focus on, on the project to be something that betters myself. Mm -hmm. So the first one was about becoming a more positive person and, you mm -hmm. know, appreciating those positive things. And then the second was about getting back into shape. So it was a hundred days. And then just every day that I worked out, I would illustrate what that, that body group was, and it was a really fun way to get back in the gym because now I'm not doing an illustration for it, but I'm back in the gym steadily. And as well, I was able to improve my illustration skills. And it's like with this one, yeah, this one sort of looks like he Mike has Jones a little said, gas. That's what Mike Jones said. <laughs> um, and as okay. well with like, so with the first one that taught me a lot in illustrator and, mm -hmm. but I, it also helped me gauge my time. So with the black and white, like I decided on the second project, I didn't want to spend as much time. So I just made sure it was all black and white. And um, that in itself became a challenge. Like thinking in only two colors, let alone black and white, it, it became daunting. So was this the first one? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you really got different styles. You're just playing different styles, just mm -hmm. figuring out. And then you really hit on something. Yeah. So I started these characters on like day 30 something. And then it was like 10 or 12 days into them. The creative South happened and I took a workshop with Dustin and we had to, you know, put together this package to put up on creative market. So I put together these workout dudes and Dustin was like that, that's an idea right there. Like you could really run with that. And I was like, okay, okay. I hadn't really thought about it that way, but I could see this being something. So after he said that, and I was enjoying the character, so I just kind of ran with it. So it was like from day 30, whatever it was, till day 100, I just made it. Are they things. labeled? Um, oh, 49 of 100. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, so now I'm putting together this, this pack on Creative Market. So it has 65 of the character illustrations and then like 10 scenes that you feel like drop these characters into but it's like it's it's not something that i said like i didn't start this project with the idea in mind like i'm gonna do this so i can put something up on creative market and try to have some like any form of passive income from that it was just something that happened from the project that i was able to take it and be like all right this could also be a way for me to make some potential money mm -hmm. so, so it's it, just it uh external uh it was stuff you already had dustin talks about that in the passive income for designers it's stuff you've already made or stuff you're not going at it with that mindset of creating something necessarily but possibly there's something that you could do right 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 exactly and so then um from from this so what was the time frame so you ended um this somewhere. one this one started i think also the beginning of last year Okay. And then ended, I think, around in July or August. This one took longer than it should have. I so was it another 100 days? Or mm -hmm. did you that do, you 100 did 100, days. not 178? Yeah. And, and that one wasn't like every five days of the week or like every day of the week. That one was a lot more broken up, which I, I don't know how I feel about that now. Like, I kind of wish it had been more consistent, like that I had gone to the gym like Monday through Friday like period but right. I kind of was a little more lenient on this one so it took a bit longer so but the, you're learning as you do yeah. doing these sprints you're learning what works for you and I think that's, that's something else to tell everybody else that there's you're going to figure out the thing that's working for you so then you mm -hmm. have some of these scenes kind of started smattering in and then you've mm -hmm. also done stuff I don't know if Megan did that did she do that one she did the type okay any, any kind of like type that's in there that's that's Meg. I do not okay. have the skill set. So 
I think it's M A P P E R S O N. Maybe I'll put that. I I will when we get when I stop sharing. I'll put that in the chat. But like she did this, so there was still mm -hmm. some projects that you were doing that y'all would do a a collaboration. Yeah, and I think that's really important to do. Like I'm so glad that I have her because I'm I'm not great with lettering, but to be able to think about ways that we can combine our skills, it's been. It's been super fun, and it's a great way to to think about how you can can combine your talents rather than just being like one thing that you do. Like, did you do Chester size? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's that's type. Okay, so so then you took a break after the exercise stuff. Mm -hmm. How long was that break? That was. I think maybe this so, is the last one. One hundred yeah. of a hundred. This yeah. was August sixth. So I, I'm not sure how long I took a break. It was August a, 10th, four days. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like till the next side project. Like I'm trying I don't know how long it was till I started the next side project, but I started. This is the next one, right? Oh, okay. So yeah. August, August 13th. So a not week. A long break. Yeah. Not a long break. <laughs> um, but I didn't stick with this one that long. And I think okay. I want to come back to it, but I think one reason why I didn't stick with it as long is because it wasn't something that was bettering myself. Mm -hmm. And as well, I love video games to the extent that like, it sucks up my time because I enjoy them so much. So as much as I enjoyed making a video game based illustration project, I ended up wanting to play too many video games. So <laughs> it, it didn't work out as well as I was hoping. So I might, I mean, I want to come back to that one later, but for now I'm taking a break from that one until I know that I can, keep the video game playing on control. So uh, Dylan says, Nick, one of the things I appreciate, and Dylan's on next week, so I appreciate oh. him saying this and being here, of course. Um, one of the things I appreciate your Instagram feed is the fact that you're flexing your illustrator muscles, meaning you're not stuck in a one trick pony mode of illustrating, but exploring different techniques, themes, etc. Good stuff. And then Emily says, I love Nick's video game art. It always fun seeing designers make work focusing on their other passions and hobbies, especially when you share those hobbies. And Amy said it was a great workshop that Dustin, that you both it did. And, and David says the video game struggle is real. It, it's tough. It is tough to find that line. Yeah, I bet. Well, and it kind of sucks you in, right? It, it does. It does. Because I mean, it's like I wanted to make the illustration like based on the video game I was playing so then I'd start playing the game but then I wouldn't want to stop playing and I wouldn't want to illustrate and it was it just didn't work out as easily <laughs> so how long did that one go how long was that two days I but think. that was that sounds like you did it it was like hey I'm gonna drink every night to like throw up you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're like hey this isn't so great for my health maybe yeah and okay also I'm sorry. I'm just trying, my cat's trying. She's trying to get in my lap right now. I knew she would. She she's, can get in your lap. She needs to do a cameo. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, so you went from so you took whole seven days off of uh, <laughs> one. Did you already know what you wanted to do for the next theme? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there she is. Yeah. She's she's popping in. <laughs> <laughs> you she's can unplug if you need to. Um, I'm watching out for. Her. Okay. So, um, but now you kind of have a better idea of what, um, oh, look at her. Um, you have a better idea of how much time. Seven days might not be enough. Mm hmm mm hmm But so, you're still drawing in between all those. You're just not necessarily yeah. illustrating daily. Exactly. So it's like after the video game project, like I decided to wrap that up. I, I just kind of illustrated whatever was coming to my mind till the end of the year. So like I, I produced a decent amount after the project was done, but um, it was like, I, I did that best nine thing of 2017. And I saw like, I only had 180 posts for the year. What is that hand doing? It should be petting me. <laughs> well, like I only had like 180 posts for the year. And I was kind of like, eh, that's, that's not really enough. Mm. So that's what kind of gave me an idea like this year, I like the 100 days from the fitness challenge. So I was like, all right, I want to do 300 illustrations. So I decided to do the 100 day sprints. And then after the 100 days is over, I, I just take a break for three weeks, 21 days, and then start the next one. So it's like by the end of the sprint break time, it's like 363 days. 
So there's only a few days left of the year after that. And it's like, it's, it's just a lot easier pacing for myself rather than just doing 300 days straight. Right. Just make sure that I have that downtime to really, you know, get the, the creative juice flowing again. Cause it's not always easy, you know, there's, Some, there's really tough days. Sometimes you'll just have days that you don't make anything, but then you might be making some things in those three weeks, but you're giving yourself just mind space to kind of create. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like on days where I'm not posting something, I, I'm still sketching. It's just, no idea really came to my mind that I'm like, all right, I'm really sold on it. So what about um, when it is hard? What do you do? What would you tell me or anybody else when I get to a feeling like, I mean, I realized me and you talked about this um, the other day. I was like, yeah, man, I drew a ton when I was at my parents' house, but now <laughs> I'm kind of like, I'm done. And I'm about to start this big project. So I realized that I needed to break up my day and to, and do different things. I didn't need to like just try to paint for eight hours every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds like it would be great, but it was really sort of, it was, I got after three days of that, I was like, okay, I'm kind of done. You know, I don't want to do it anymore. So Mm -hmm. what would you, what would you tell someone who, when they get, cause they're going to get to that hard spot, right? Right. Um, so for me personally, I'm really glad that I did the everyday challenge because when it comes to that in like, that voice is telling you like, ah, you, you don't need to do that today. Or there's just no reason, like just whatever excuse you're giving, like having the everyday project, it just, it forces you to like, you're not going to like every idea you make, Mm. but ultimately at the end of the day, if you create something, you're doing more than most people would like that really does separate you. It's just like on those days when it's really tough, just showing up makes all the difference. So, Oh, go ahead. So it's just like, whenever you're doing that kind of like, if it's an everyday product, like, I think you should do that if you have that voice inside you that's telling you no. Mm. But if you've already done that and it's like, there's just days where you're just not feeling it, then that's okay. You know, like, there's going to be those days where you can't think of something or, you know, come up with an idea that you're just sold on. But as long as you're trying like sketching or whatever, that's, that's what's important. Well, one thing I love, and as we went through the exercise one, it seemed really tight, like you were really tight in the beginning. And then you got a little looser with, and you, your characters had more personality. And so it was kind of like, um, you didn't know who it was like a sailor guy (laughs) sometime, you know, and then, um, you know, a younger guy with doing different you know they just look different but they had a lot more personality so i think that you were able to um explore characters Mm -hmm. in a different way Mm -hmm. instead of just being so rigid about this is the exercise right and that's i mean that's the thing with like those kind of projects especially with working out like ultimately i was working out like four different body groups a week so 100 days it'd have to be 25 different illustrations each focused on that body group, but having to say something different each time. So yeah, by the end of it, you, you'd have to, I got pretty creative on how I'd express what I worked out that day. So some old men came into play, some, some sailors, kayaks, fireworks, <laughs> like, it, it gets tough, but that's, you know, I'm really glad that I did it because it got me thinking in, in different ways of how I could express something. So one of the things I wanted to ask, um, so I think, I think it's really important to work in a series. I would make you work in a series. I don't know if you did or not, but I I try to get my students to work in a series because I think what it tells, it tells a client that, Hey, I could do this. um, I can, you know, make something and it can, we can do it for a year and I can keep coming up with ideas. Mm -hmm. They're not all going to be killer, but just like mayhem, right? The mayhem commercials with all state, I think it's all state or state farm or whatever it is. I don't think it's state farm. I think it's all state. I think it's all state. Yeah. Which is pretty bad that I can't remember that part. <laughs> but um, when, why is working in a series, why is a hundred days of working in one theme or a series or a style um, important? And how has that, um, how has that impacted you in your career? Um, so I think it's important because it forces you out of your comfort zone if you're going to be doing the same kind of thing for a hundred days, you're either going to get really repetitive and boring. You're going to start thinking in different ways of how you can express something. So 
it's important to do something really consistently for a long period of time because really your creativity is going to grow from it. Um, and that's another thing where you'll start looking at how other people have, have solved that, I'd like, that idea visually and, and you can start experimenting with their kind of style. Like I think um, George Bokua just recently did a fitness like icon bundle type of thing. When I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh why can't I think of something like that? Like it turned out really good. So it's just like, you'll see other people doing that kind of thing. And it just gets you in a whole different kind of mindset whenever you're doing the same theme for such a long period of time. So then how did it impact? Did you, do you think that that helped you get, so you were working an internship when you're during your senior year and mm -hmm. then you stayed on, it was like four days a week um, mm -hmm. at that place after you graduated. And it, you knew it wasn't the, it wasn't the, it was a job and it was in yeah. design, but it wasn't necessarily, um, what the, yeah, what you wanted to do. So mm -hmm. how did, how did doing these illustrations, being consistent, producing good work, learning, putting work out there, how did that help you get the job you have now? So whenever I was at that other job, like I've always been someone who just, I observe a lot. So I just like, I would constantly see what other people are putting out. And when it comes to the design world, like I, it's super competitive. You either are super good or you're just, you're not as noticeable. So by creating these things and constantly trying to push myself, like that's what got me the attention to, to get the job I have now, because ultimately it was like, um, there was this freelance project they needed done. Um, I work at Mighty by the way. I don't know if I ever said that. So Mighty Advertising yes. in Mobile. So they needed a freelance illustrator for a project that they had. And I happened to have an old classmate who worked there. And I was like already over a hundred days into my first project whenever um I started like she they were needing someone. So it's like she she reached out to me since they had seen my work before and just thanks to me putting out that work, like I didn't have to say anything. They contacted me and it's just been able to get me a ton of contacts and people in the industry like that I know now. So it's just, you won't ever, there's no negatives to doing like a, a side project. And it's really. also keeping up with the people that are making new friends. If you don't, if you know, this was somebody you were in class with and I always call it our family. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, even when Christine didn't want to be part of our family. <laughs> um, but, but it, this was a time we have together and this is, we are, we're still going to be here for each other after. And so it's like, there are certain people like that in your life. And mm -hmm. so just because they were following you, Louise was following you then, right. It was Louise, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I just think it's making sure that you keep connections, right. you know? Yeah. We miss you too, Carrie. And Carol Ann used to work with Stephen and Jared. Oh, wow. Small world. I know. Crazy. All right. So um, they saw the illustration, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They And they called you in. A lot of design places do this. A lot of advertising places, they call you in as a contract, yeah. you know, freelance job to see how it works, see how your mm -hmm. personality gels with theirs, right. see how quickly you do and how, because then now you're full time and you've done icons at 75 icons for something that, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's a another, lot. like, it's, it's so helpful to do a side project. That's really, it's, if it's centered around design and what you want to be doing, because then, you know, potential employers will know exactly where you're going to fit into the company. Like they didn't hire me on thinking, okay, he's going to be our layout guy. Like they knew exactly what my biggest <coughs> strength was and how that it could help their company. So that's, that's another huge pro to just starting your own side project. And it doesn't mean that you have to be amazing at it in the beginning. So no. that is a, one of my biggest things is that that's terrible or mm -hmm. that is so ugly. I can't believe you posted that. Do you feel like that now? Can you show us your robot so that we can kind of see your progression? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I did used to feel like that. Um, it's, it's a daunting. lot or it's a daunting. little, a lot. I mean, before, before I started illustrating daily, a lot, 
Like it, it's really easy to get in that bubble of I'm, I'm no good. Why should I be doing this when there's already so many people that are better than me? Mm. But it's like, ultimately, if you keep having that mindset, then you won't even be a contender with these right. other people that are out there. So it's like, just starting these projects, it's, it's made the biggest difference. So let's, yeah. Because everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And we'll, we'll, here's where I started with. So this was in know? August or something? Yeah. So this was the first illustration I ever did. And it was in my illustration class in 2015. Yeah, August. Awesome gradients, Nick. <laughs> it's beautiful. The arms are really, they're lively. <laughs> it's but seriously, nice. it's better than I could do in the computer. <laughs> I just draw so my robots. Beginning. So that's where I started. And then um, one year later, this was the second robot illustration I did. And... I'm Even gonna be perspective, really everything's, it's not flat. Yeah. And that's, that was like day, I think it was in the fifties of the first project. So it wasn't even that long into doing the illustrator stuff. And I'm going to be doing a robot illustration every year. So this was this year's. So you can I really see like that one. There. It was fun. It was and fun. that one has like a texture in it too, which yeah. the others didn't. Yes. Yeah. These are all oh, in, yeah. uh, Daniel had asked, and I don't know if he asked this a long time ago. I just saw this. Um, he asked if this was all an illustrator and yes, yes. this was, yeah. that is, that's what I use for everything. I want to start delving more into Photoshop for textures with my illustrations, like combine illustrator and Photoshop. Cause I know it's like a super powerful combination, but I'm just not as, as proficient with Photoshop yet to be doing that. So maybe will that be one of your hundred day sprints this, t this year? I'm very, I'm thinking about it. It's like for the next one, I think I might do something lettering based. And then the third might be a combination of Illustrator, Photoshop, but we'll see. That's, that's the thing with like the downtime in between them is I'll be able to really think about what it is I want to be doing for the next hundred days. All right. So one of the things you figured out that you liked was like buildings and scenes and you've been doing a lot of more 3D, like really using gradients really well. Cause I think a gradient, like your first robot the gradient you know, um, but the, the next one, um, uh, I think those are, look like more flat colors, but I know a lot of the illustrations that you're doing now that the, it just looks like paper and light, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like a gradient, which I think that's a gradient working correctly. Right. So what, what's the next, what's the next hundred days going to be for you? So I think for this one, it's, it's going to be more so focused on what's like going on in my day because I really did enjoy the positive, like the, the positive day one. Cause it's just, there is no shortage of ideas. Mm. So I think I might do that for this one. And then as well, like any nature idea that comes to my mind. Cause really those are like my favorite ones. It's just not every day I'm thinking like, boom, got an idea. So it'll probably be a lot of personal stuff. And then, nature illustrations scattered in between for the first hundred days. So when could someone expect to see these workout dudes on creative market? I'd like to say by, by this weekend. Like that's but maybe by the end of January for sure. End of January for sure. Like if I don't have them up by then, then you can get on to me. Cause that's, that's just bad. Cause it's like, I have, I have all the assets together in one file, like all of the characters, all the scenes. It's just now a matter of, product testing really and, and seeing making sure that it works on someone else's MacBook the way right. that it needs to. So definitely and creating your promo images and things like yeah, that, right? Yeah, the cover images. Those are always okay. just daunting to me. So why do you think why now? Because you had this back in April, but maybe you didn't have all the assets worked out and everything yeah. like that. So right. why now um and not before? Um like you said first I didn't have all of the assets. But now as well, January is the biggest push for gyms. Every like anyone who goes to the gym will tell you resolutioners are very, very prolific in January. Like everyone wants to start that trend and it's great. Like I love that they're there, but it's, it's definitely the busiest time for the gym, I'd say. So it seemed like a appropriate time to release this is whenever all the resolutioners are coming and there's a lot more fitness things going around. Is that what they're Hopefully called? Revolutioners? Resolutioners. Resolutioners? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That's great. <laughs> I didn't know that. 
I'm telling you, you go to the gym right now, there will be about 20 more people than normal. Huh. It, it generally goes on till about like mid February, then it goes back to normal. So how will the new challenge be different from just a positive thing in your day? So. Cause how are you going to like, I think I need more parameters. I'm not sure it'll be that different. Okay. It's just going to, it doesn't have to be a positive experience necessarily from it. It's not going to be negative, but it's just going to be, something from my day like yesterday I did something snow themed because it's been so cold around here but it hasn't snowed and that's that bothers me I don't know why it's like 20 degrees and we still don't get snow it's like of course when it's super cold like we could have snow right now it's perfectly sunny it's like it's beautiful but yeah. then once it hits like right above the freezing point that's when it's gonna rain like I already know <laughs> that's how it happens so, probably all right so one, what oh go ahead I mean, so this one will just be, it'll be a different, a little different from the positive. Kind of like a diary of your day, something that yeah, stood out exactly. from your day. And so exactly. then you'll be able to look back at it and be like, yeah. oh yeah, that's when I did this or we did yeah. this or something. And that's one thing that I really liked from the first project. It was, it really was kind of like a visual journal. So like I could look back on that day and remember pretty much exactly what happened and what brought up that idea. So it's yeah. really fun in that way. I. I can remember um, what we were watching on TV when, cause I draw a lot when we're watching TV and I can remember what we were watching. Cause we'll just, you know, do those like, like this one, this is totally a terrible illustration people. Sorry. But like, I know we were watching, um, um, that he's a really bad guy on the TV show. He oh, looks yeah, cute he there, but cute there. yeah, I know. See, clearly I'm not so good at that. <laughs> I only make people cute. Um, I can't even think of the name of that TV show. Anyway, it's, but I, every time I think of, I pull that, I remember that John and I were watching that TV show, you know, and yeah. I marathon it or whatever. <laughs> I, and I think that that's nice. That'll be a nice way for you to look back at the um, right. hundred years. And yeah, Andre's here from Portugal. It's so, a really fun kind of visual trigger that works. Huh. Okay. So I want to ask you two more questions. Okay. Um, why do you think um, your illustration slash design challenges have worked for you? Um, so I kind of like talked about that earlier where basically the video game one didn't work as well, but whenever it was more so focused on positive experiences or something personal, it's a lot easier to stick with. Like just making sure it's not just something you're gonna pull off on a website where it has a list of different side projects you can do, mm -hmm. but just making it personal. And if you can make it about growth as well, like something positive uh, is so if this weren't me, like if someone really liked reading, but they don't read as much as they used to anymore, make it focused around that. Or mm -hmm. if you're more so into lettering, but you don't letter like you want to, like make it around that, just make it whatever, if there's something like you used to do, but then maybe you stopped doing because there was time constraints, you just don't have time for it anymore. Like make it focused around that so it's, you can combine both of the things. And I think that's really gonna make it easier to stick to it. So some people feel like burned out at the end of the day mm -hmm. and they can't imagine doing this um, at the end of the day. Would you suggest them starting their day doing this then? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you know, like that's, that's the biggest thing you have to be honest with yourself, know your own personal routine and what works best for you. But if you're always burnt out at the end of the day, don't do it at the end of the day, wake up a bit earlier and do it in the mornings, like before you go into work or something. But you, I mean, that just, it takes, it'll take some experimenting to, to find what works best for you. Okay. So how long do you think is long enough to experiment? 15 days, 30 days, what? I mean, what was it for you? Like how long did the, you know that the um, video game one wasn't working? Uh, so that was like 30 days. And that's, I mean, I think you'll know pretty quick. I think also another reason why like that one didn't stick with me as much is because I was trying to combine After Effects and animation. Mm. And it's super daunting. Like that's that's one thing I'll say is, if you're trying to learn two new programs, it's, it's tough. Like I just felt like it helped to just focus in on one and, and only worry about that. So that's one thing there. 
So Brian says he's wiped out at the end of the day, but drawing in the evenings and nights is a great way for him to unwind and de-stress. He has an illustration project. He's done these faces that are really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so how have you shared your work? Because this is something a lot of people want. They, they kind of get a little afraid of this. So there's stories now you can share and they go mm -hmm. away or you can do Facebook or Instagram. What, what's, um, what's your method? Right now, I'm using Instagram and Dribble. Um, when I did my first one, I did Instagram, Facebook, and Dribble. But I kind of went off of Facebook because it's not that I didn't enjoy posting on it. It's just you don't have that same outreach. Like mm -hmm. all the people you're sharing it to won't. With Instagram, there's a potential that someone's going to see that you, that you don't know, that that could trigger like a message where they want some work done for them or something like that. As where Facebook, I never had that experience. Maybe if you have like a huge friend list, it, it's a different story, but I, it just didn't work as well for me. So what was, what did you consider um, a good week? Was it a lot of comments or was it um, more followers or was it just more likes on a certain piece? For me, um, I think for basing these projects, like anything I did or anything I made, I never think about the amount of likes it's going to get or comments or anything. And I think that's why it's so big to make it personal because then mm -hmm. if you're looking for these comments, likes, whatever, and right. you don't get that, it's super discouraging. You're like, oh man, I spent so much time on this. I did this perfect. Someone similar did something like this and they got tons of likes, whatever. And it's just... I don't know. For me, it's just not a reason to create. Like, I, I don't, right. I don't want that kind of nagging voice in my mind. Like, oh, you didn't get enough likes on this one. Like, don't do that style anymore. So I think that's that's mm -hmm. why it's just best to make it personal, you know. So, so it didn't, but you did really get a big growth in it. Yes. So it wasn't, and and I know you really do try to connect back with people who do comment. That's something mm -hmm. I know that you do. Yeah. Um, and that's advice I got from Scotty Russell. I mean, it's, it's, if someone's taking time out of the day, like you can tell when it's like a bot or something that's just like this generated content. But if someone writes like a personal comment, like, yeah, you should, I mean, respond to that because they, you know, they're reaching out to you. So it's just, it's best to go ahead and say something back. So, and I agree, I, we shouldn't be doing it for likes or whatever. So I like that it's the personal. I'm definitely not doing it for the likes. And I, I you know, I also think it depends on when you post something. It could have been an yeah. awesome illustration, but you just posted it at the wrong time or on the right. wrong day. Or right. there was a big explosion somewhere and they, you know, somebody's yeah. milk flew off. You know, the, it just, you have no idea what is happening in everybody's day. So exactly. there's lots of uh, external factors that can impact the, the likes you get on the post. So. Just make it rewarding for yourself. So then what about, what kind of tips would you give somebody? So you did, you do use, so you make a post, you will have the content and then you make another post that has hashtags. Yeah, the hashtag. Is your first post, does it ever have hashtags in it? If it does, it's the personal one that I have for that project. Okay. So like for the first one, it was Nick's Good Day. For the second mm -hmm. one, it was Nick Gets Fit. And I think that's important, like to have a hashtag that you can associate all the illustrations you made on a project for. Like, it's just, it's nice to be able to click on that and then see everything that someone did on it. So that's the only time I'll have like the hashtags in the post. So then what kind of hashtags would you tell people to do? Cause like if I'm doing illustration, I'm doing illustration practice. Mm -hmm. Were you drawing, like if you drew a sunset or a sunrise, do you do mountain? Like how, how would somebody to, cause you're, at the same time, you are trying to expand your reach, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm not, do like, while I am doing it for myself, I'm not just doing it to keep it all to myself. Like, I do want to share all this and make different connections and meet different people from them. But it's, like, the way that I found a lot of the hashtags to use was, once again, like, looking at people that are really prolific and see what hashtags they used. Mm -hmm. And then just, like, finding all those and making the mixture that, that fits best for yourself. And then I would include, like, one or two that are related to the actual subject that I did okay. rather than like if I did something about mountains, not like 20 hashtags about like camping, hiking mountains or whatever, right. because ultimately I don't want to reach those people as much. I want to reach more of the design community. So I'm going to share because Andre says he said, 
ask if you can, can explain it better. So hopefully maybe we've done that somewhat. Whoops. Um, oh, boogers. That was not what I wanted to do. Okay, here. I'm going to go back to Instagram. I'm going to click on this one. Okay. I really like this one a lot. Thank I don't know why I haven't liked it. Sorry. <laughs> so here's what he's saying. So here's his first post, decided to make that sunrise from the other day a bit less simple. Oh, so then the separate hashtag. Pardon? Gradients on gradients on gradients. Okay, that. so that's... I normally that's, don't do that, but hey, it, it fit. Is this one that's just you? Yeah, probably. I, I doubt anyone else has used that before. Okay, and then you're doing some basic ones, really general ones in this right. second post. Yeah. Illustration, illustrator, illustration of the day, vector, vector art, mm -hmm. vector design. And that's actually, I went to yours and looked when I was pulling hashtags for my post for this episode, and mm -hmm. I pulled some that I didn't even think about, like the vector art, um, graphic art, graphic design, gra illustration, gram. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A design art draw sketch dribble um simply cool design what's that one from uh they're like a curated page okay they have really really good stuff on there the design tip best vector is this graphics mobile or graphics mob uh graphics mob oh. another super good curated page okay and then nature and then creative so nature mm -hmm. clearly is this one and then yeah. um all right so I'm going to stop share because we're getting some questions over here. So, okay. He got it. Okay. You comment the tags after. Yes. So yeah. hopefully that makes sense. Um, so you would tell people just to share. So for me, don't worry about it, Diane, just make your messes and just get, um, <laughs> Dylan says he's going to start all his <laughs> new posts with Nick Brito's yeah. is the dude. <laughs> Um, is there any reason why that you're putting it in two different posts? Uh, mainly just because I just want, like, I want it's people cleaner. to read my, yeah, it's cleaner. I want people to read the message associated to my picture and just have that clean. And then if you go into the comments, you can see the hashtag cloud. Like, it's just something that I have. Do because, have that. It, because Instagram has, there is a trick, just so you know, you can put periods on a separate line, hit return, put a period, hit return, put a period, and then it'll put some space between your post mm -hmm. and the other. Mm -hmm. But it it doesn't seem to be messing with anything. And it, it's in the post, but it's not necessarily part of that. I don't know right. if it, um, we'll have to test that out, Andre, because I'm not sure if it if it does do anything. Yeah. He's too lazy. You can do the periods. <laughs> um, I think that that's a good way. Um, uh, Peter says, uh, hey, guys, just a tip work from working at Instagram. Because the way Instagram works, it's best to keep all your hashtags mm -hmm. in your first post. I was so wondering about that. So that's so like with the image. Yes. Yeah, so just oh. do the periods to make that there's a big, you can make a bigger blank space. So then mm -hmm. you have the separation, just so you know. Okay. I'll start doing that then. I wonder why. It, it makes a difference. <laughs> Andre says, oh, I'm lazy and smart. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, all right. So what's next for you? So you kind of mentioned it a little bit that you wanted to uh, really understand or put more texture with Photoshop. You've kind of mm -hmm. mentioned that you want to do more animation with After Effects. Mm -hmm. So basically what I want to do this year is is take everything I've learned from the last two years of Illustrate and just push it you know like really really solidify myself as an illustrator that's the biggest goal for this year is to keep illustrating and that's why I want to do the 300 illustrations because I know at the end of the day that's going to get me the most growth like personally but then also like something I'm doing on the side that I know will be some inspiration for me on these projects is like I'm reading a book every month like I, I want to get more into reading so like right now I'm reading it so there might be some creepy creepy illustrations coming up this month because it's just like that's another way where you can find inspiration from your personal life and that's mm. that's why I really think it helps to have that when I also think it's really helped your creativity like the way you're c coming up with problems you solve them a lot differently than you did when you were in school definitely oh yeah yeah for way sure school is no bueno well oh we have one more question um Daniel asks do you use astute graphics plugins for illustrator Yes, I love them. Like, Which, the uh, so yeah, I got the like they had this bundle they were running in summer, like a couple years ago, where you just got like all their plugins for like two hundred fifty bucks, and 
easily one of the best investments I've made in Illustrator. Like, especially Vector Scribe, that one alone is is the most used one I have. If you're gonna get one from them, get Vector Scribe. But it's like, it's basically the tools that Adobe should be putting in Illustrator, but they don't. So with Stu Graphics, they're they're really good. Like, you'll save so much time on so, so many different things. So Andre has a completely unrelated question, but he's in Portugal. So he says, I know this is question isn't relative to illustration, but do you have any Portuguese relatives? Your <laughs> surname is Portuguese. So you want to tell him that you're first generation American? I am first generation American. My dad is Cuban. So that's, that's where I might get some of that Portuguese vibe. <laughs> um, and then my mom is Canadian. So that, that explains that. Cuban so, in the house. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Peter. <laughs> um, that's right. Um, so Emily has a question. How do you get such depth and movement in your composition? Sometimes my work feels flat and I want to give it more oomph. Mm. So that was, that was a case of starting blocks, like building and building and building with your illustrations. So when it comes to the depth, especially in like my nature ones, Nick Slater has been a huge inspiration. Like his, his, Cause his name's is, Nick. Could be. It could be, <laughs> but like his, his nature stuff is incredible. And as well, another one is uh, Brian Edward Miller. He does stuff that's more, and also Matt Carlson, all of them have incredible nature illustrations. So that's just a case of like looking at their work, looking how they maybe cast the shadows on these trees, mountains, um, flowers, whatever, and what they did to give it depth. And then just applying that to your work. Who was the middle guy? Brian Edward who? Brian Edward Miller. What? Edward Miller. Miller. I'm yeah. sorry. I've <laughs> so Brian Yon. He's always my Vanna. Thank you, Brian. I'm like, I can't hear. What? Everybody else get it. Miller. Okay. So we got, uh, I just want to make, Matt Carlson, does he have one T or two? Uh, I think two T's. I think he's on Instagram as Plaid Mountain. I think that's his Instagram name can't say 100 percent though okay so you also miss mentioned adam grayson i'm just trying to make sure i get everybody on the um for the show notes and nick slater and i mean i mean there's a huge list of people that that i look up to for their illustration skills and that that was just another case of looking at the people who they follow and then just making a huge list from that because i got the like i remember whenever i think it was at flourish that Scotty was talking about how he uses Instagram. And it's like, he doesn't use it as something personal, like to keep up with your friends. It's, it's more so you use it as inspiration. Like you follow people where you can go on Instagram and just be inspired. Like you see how much work these people are putting out. And that's something that really pushed me is you see those really prolific people and it's, they're not lazy. They're always putting out more and more work. So that's kind of what got me in the mindset. Like, all right, if I want to be like that, then it's going to take work. For sure. Well, Nick, thanks for helping me bring in the new year and do my first alumni. Um, so glad I could first. Part, oh, man. Wait, what? I'm so glad that I could be the first oh, first alumni. Me too. And your cat got a cameo, so it's <laughs> just perfect. So I want to make sure everybody knows how to follow Nick. And I have his dribble, which is uh, everybody knows maybe not everybody, maybe my mom doesn't know, but Dribble has three Bs. It's dribble.com slash Nick, N-I-C-K-B-R-I-T-O. Burrito. It sort of sounds like we're saying burrito. No you in there. No, right. No you. But I didn't say burrito. No, you didn't. Okay. And then on Instagram, you can follow him. I'm putting that over here also at instagram.com slash Nick dot burrito, B-R-I-T-O. And so, Nick, thank you. I'm super excited, and I'm very glad that um, you got to be here. Thank and you. always just glad to see when we get to eat lunch and stuff. And we'll have to do a – you were one of the people that were um, putting your whole class together, like getting people from your class together. So I think that uh, – I think it's always good to kind of help – everybody reconnect. So for sure. I'll have to um, come in, come to one of those, uh, what do you call that when you bust in on somebody else's party? Uh, I don't know. Photo bomb, <laughs> but not a photo bomb. I can't remember. 
hit, you crash. You crash their yeah. party. Yeah. Yeah. Like Laney's like crash. That's you. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Um, but I'll have these links, the astute graphics, the vector scribe, all that stuff. Um, and thank you for everybody um plopping up uh, other links for me. I appreciate it. Um, next week we have Dylan and I don't know how to say his name, but I will in about two minutes cause he's going to pop on on here. Um, but it's M E N G E S. I know how to spell it. So Dylan is amazing illustrator and in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm super right. Columbus. Um, I'm super excited to have him on. So join next week and I am going to be adding some of my illustration stuff. So if you want to follow me on the, on the Instagram, you can, it's C Diane Gibbs is that handle. If you want to give me a little help support, um, that would be great. So yes, more illustrators for sure. I'm definitely digging in. And then if anybody wants to reach out to me, I think I already did this. Yes. But you can always find more episodes at recharging you.com or you can email me or Twitter me or whatever uh, at design recharge, or you can email me at Diane at design So I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much, Nick. See ya. <laughs>